Hi, my name is Paul O'Malley and this is my course on deploying static React apps to the cloud or AWS in general. Now, if you are a React developer, there is a ton of ways to deploy your apps. In this course, we're going to look at some of the easiest and fastest way to get your application beyond your local dev machine, right? And out there in, in production, we're going to start off with using Amazon S3 and CloudFront to protect that site as well. We'll also automate this process by setting up a CI CD pipeline. This will be pretty high level. However, it will give you just enough foundation to get started. We're going to explore some very easy ways where you can take your web app from your local machine and easily get it out there. We'll also explore how we can use Route 53 to use a custom domain. And later on, we'll also take a look into AWS Amplify which gives you a secondary option. However, it really makes the process super simple if you just want to focus on the deployment side. So join me in this course. It should be pretty quick. However, it will be a good reference if you're a React developer and you want to find a way just to get your site out there. Thanks. And build a simple React application, right? And, and this is just a demonstrate how fast we can get a site from local machine to the cloud, in this case, S3, right? And I'll call this my, my app. This should take maybe just a few seconds just to build up. If you're using any other NPM related tool to create this, uh, you probably already have your way of doing this. This goal is just to create the bare bone React application. And that's what we'll use throughout this this course, right? This is not a course that teaches you how to develop for React, but just to deploy, right? And there's so much ways to do it. So we're going to look at just a few other popular ways. Now that I have my React application, I'll just CD. And let's do a LS. So there we have our static files and let's do an npm run build just to build this. And we'll grab the build folder and push it up to S3. Now that we have our React application locally, if we go over to S3, we're going to create a unique bucket. And we're going to make this open to the public since we're going to serve it up as a website and it create bucket. Okay. So we need to acknowledge this. And let's hit create bucket. And once we create that bucket, we need to change a few properties. One being static web hosting. We're gonna enable this. And let's just put an index as a root file. It save changes. And one last thing, we do need a policy. And this will tell S3 who can access the bucket. In this case, well, it'll be a website, right? So anyone should be able to to access it and we want to say anyone can get these objects. It's safe. And the next thing is to upload our objects. When earlier we build, if you remember we do an npm build so we should have a build folder. We're just going to grab the content of the build folder and copy them over to S3. So let's do that. I'm going to add files and or I could drag it over, which is a lot easier. And it upload. And we should be done, right? If we go to properties, we should be able to get to those, get to our Babel and website. And ta-da, and that's how easy it is to take a React application beyond your local machine, right? In the next few videos, we're gonna explore uh, some more advanced option maybe use CloudFront if you notice this is unsecured right this isn't what we want to use is just HTTP if we want HTTPS we can use CloudFront and that improves performance as well by uh, using the caching mechanism from CloudFront and we'll also add a custom domain and we'll set up a simple pipeline but the goal here is just to see how easy it is to take the your react apps beyond your local dev machine 
I'll be using Visual Studio Code as my preferred IDE. If you already have a setup and you're able to create React project, you can continue to use that. One great thing, benefit of Visual Studio is the ability to use remote developer tool and that uses Docker um, container so that we can create an isolated development environment. The good thing with that also is it comes pre-built with a lot of the utilities that we need, such as Git, um, AWS CLI, and any other utility, which is a pretty easy way to get started. So I've already created a simple React project. This is just the bare bone project itself. But before I start making any changes, I'll go ahead and enable a remote developer tool. The first thing you need to do is and that is if you're using Visual Studio, is to go over to the extensions and type in remote containers. And I've already added it, have it um, installed, but you do need to get this installed. Um, if you haven't installed this, you, this disable button should be an install in your machine. Once that is installed, we want to go to view command palette. And we want to type or search for remote containers. Add development container. Once you click add development container, here we can choose the container image that we need. So for React application, we need Node.js. And I'll go with 16. We also need a few utilities and this is where this makes this a lot easier so we're gonna go with AWS CLI git and github CLI and I think that should be enough yep that should be enough so it okay and we'll go with the latest and this will start a few prompts we're gonna hit reopen in container and this may take a minute or two before we rebuild the container, we want to make a few changes. So if you collapse, now you'll see a new folder structure with the container. It should be a Docker file, which is just a bare bone Docker and the image that we choose. But this is where we can make some additional configuration. What this does is this will give you an isolated Visual Studio Code environment, right? So we're able to still add any extension that we need. So if we go to extension, and one extension that I like to use is the Prettier extension. If you right click, you can add it to the dev container. So if there's any other extension that you like to use, you can follow this process. So if we go back and open up this, we should see the extension created there. And this, we haven't built the image yet. So since this is a container, we also need to forward traffic to the container. React tends to use port 3000, so we'll, we'll go with that as well. And we also need to uncomment the post create. I am using NPM, if you're using Yarn, you can leave this as default. Another thing I like to do is to add a means to automatically reload the node project, or React in this case. So I'll go ahead and add one small utility. So I'll go ahead and add um, Chuckadar. So let's type container environment. And in parentheses, we want to type in all caps. There are other utilities you can use to get auto reload like Nodeman, but I like to use this one. And we want to set this to true. And this should be lowercase. And that should be it. We're going to go ahead and save this. The next step is to rebuild the container and that should give us the container. Here already um, in the container instance, we want to rebuild this. So let's go to the command palette again. And you can search for remote containers rebuild. And this will rebuild the image with all the latest changes that we just made. This may take a few minutes to 
run and if I look at the logs you will start seeing that container building process it's downloading all the the tooling that we need so my process took around three to four minutes and you should get this prompt press any key to close the container and I'm gonna hit Control C or Command C to exit or you can go ahead and open up a new tab so we should be in running the container with all the changes these ports should be open so let's go ahead and actually try to run our react application and again we need to be in the project itself so let me cd and I'll go ahead and clear this. And there we go. And here is our application running on the container itself. And this is not your local machine. So it's running within the container. You do get a local address. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Um, Command C, Control C if you're on a Mac or Windows.
So now that we have our website being served up through CloudFront and S3, uh, what happens if we want to make a change to our website? The option we would have is to repeat the initial process of going to the bucket and using the upload process, which can be quite tedious. Um, in order for us to do this in a much easier way, we want to set up a credential um, locally in our terminal. And to do that, we're going to set up a IAM user. So let's go to IAM. And I like to pin these services so that it can be easily accessible. Open up IAM. And before I create a user, I'll go ahead and create a group. And this is a nifty way to group users, whether you have developers or just yourself. So let's create a group, and this can be called anything. I'm going to call it the developer group. And I want to give that group a policy. Since this would be a developer, I'm going to give it a admin, give it the admin policy. And you can search all the way down. Search through admin and give it administrator access. Make sure you, that is selected and it create group. And let's just double check if the developer group has the permission. So if we go back to developer and you check permission, you should see. And this should give us access to S3 and all the services that we need um, from the CLI. The next thing is to actually create a user. So go over to users. And where again we can create a user. I already have one created. I'm going to call this user web developer. This can be any name. And now we have two type of access. One is programmatic access, this which is what we want um, from the CLI or from the SDK. And the next set of access would give the user access to the web portal itself. But we want to keep this um, programmatic access. Let's go through the permission and we want to put it in the developer group. We could have added the permission directly to the user, but I find groups an easier way to categorize, um, go through this process. And it creates user. Now the final step is to actually add these credential to your machine. In my case, I'm using the Docker um, remote desktop. So I'm gonna copy these down. Um, you may want to download this. Try to keep this um, private. A matter of fact, after this video, I'll go ahead and delete this because anyone with this access can create and delete services in your AWS account. So go to while this is still open or you can download the CSV file. I'll go back to the AWS CLI. And remember when we when I set up my development environment, I also installed the AWS CLI and I'm using version 2.7. So let me clear this. And what we need to do is create a profile. Now you may have, let's say you're working on multiple projects with multiple um, AWS accounts. You can name these profile um, to, to keep them isolated. So what I'll do is I'll create a profile with a name of choice. So you issue AWS configure and profile and then the name of the profile. I'm going to call this profile developer and this can be any name as long as you remember the name right now it will ask you for your access key and that's when you want to go out and grab these values so I'm going to copy and paste this in I'm going to do the same for the secret key next thing to ask is for my default region I am in US East one and if you want to check based on your location you can look at which data center is closer to you and then closer to us east and hit enter and that creates the profile now while the profile is created it's not actually in use yet and we can test this so if we say let's say we want to list the s3 buckets in our account so it would be aws s3 ls and you should get a message saying unable to locate credentials so what you need to do is to actually export this credential so we're going to say export aws profile equal the name of the profile we just created right here 
once that to see if the profile is actually activated let's try that command again there we go we can see the bucket there's some there's a ton of um, utilities and documentation out there you can find around the AWS CLI another way to check if the session is active is to call the identity and you will see which profile and this is useful if you have multiple profile you want to check which one is active so now we can issue a bunch of command to the S3 so again we see with by issuing AWS S3 LS we're able to list the bucket what if we want to list the content of the bucket so I'm gonna go ahead and clear this and I'll do another AWS S3 LS this time with the bucket name and here we go these are all the contents of the bucket so now that we have this setup one nifty way to do this is we can actually add a script a command in the script section to push the files to s3 anytime we do a build so what we want to do is in the script and actually let me close this we're not going to save we want to open the packet.json and scroll down to your scripts section and we want to add a deploy command so we want to do a AWS S3 async and a sync works almost similar to a copy and this is just another way of pushing content to, to S3 so we want to sync everything in the build folder to our S3 bucket and this is double dub cloud now we also need to tell S3 which profile to use and this will be the profile that we created earlier web developer and I'm gonna go ahead and save this now let's say we want to make a change and I think I actually let me go back to my package.json and this should be dub 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 that's just my name oh I named my bucket let me save this and I want to go make a change I'm gonna remove this code section and put a h1 tag and I'm gonna say um, this is the latest changes from local and let's go ahead and save this and we're going to build the content again so that we can push the latest um, build to our build folder and that's by npm run build if you're using yarn follow that um, command as well now that our site is built we want to run a deploy again npm run deploy again if you're using yarn follow those um, step for yarn command and this should copy the file and if we scroll here we should see the command getting kicked off and it's copying all the static files up so let's go back to our react site and I'll refresh so you see this our website is still being served up with the old content and that's one of the behaviors of CloudFront right CloudFront caches um, your static files so it can be served up much faster so what we want to do is to actually invalidate the CloudFront distribution so we can pull in the latest static files. So if we go over to CloudFront, and we hit on our CloudFront distribution, we'll see invalidation. So let's go. We're going to manually do it now, and then we show you how to bind that in the deploy as well. Let's create an invalidation and I'm going to say star so all the content is invalidated so let's since this is completed let's actually refresh and there we go once we invalidate the cache CloudFront will serve up the latest content so let's see how we can actually add that to the build script as well let's go over to CloudFront and we want to get the distribution ID so it's in CloudFront and 
you should see your CloudFront distribution ID here. You can just copy this. What we want to do is to update or build script um, in the package.json so that right after the sync command, we perform a invalidation. And that's a way of clearing the CloudFront cache and put in new content. So we're going to do a and issue a new command, which is a AWS CloudFront create invalidation. If I can spell validation on a particular distribution with ID paste and we want to tell it which parts. Now we want to refresh everything so we can do a slash star and we want to escape this or else we may run into some problems. So let's do like this. So which this slash star will get passed in and we're going to go ahead and save this. And again, let's see if we can actually make some changes as well, just to be on the safe side. So if we go back to, let me collapse my build and I go back to my app.js and I've already typed in with invalidation. This hasn't been pushed yet. Let's save this and do a npm run build. And a deploy, we should trigger off our invalidation and sync and there we go now you may have to click um, through this uh, well not click just press the <laughs> enter key to complete the command and I'll just hit Q to quit if we go over to our web site and refresh we should see the latest change so that's a nifty way right at this point we have your site serving up through CloudFront, and you no longer have to manually copy and paste up that content. Now there's a lot more we can do with this. Um, in our next few videos, we'll look into creating a CI CD pipeline so that we can incorporate um, version control as well. We also need to add a domain. Um, this isn't quite friendly. <laughs> And you may want to use your own custom domain. So we'll look at how to do that in the next few videos. So before we can use our own custom domain, right, we do need to have an active domain, either through row 53, and that's managed by AWS or any other external domain registrar. For the simplicity of this exercise, we'll use row 53. I've already created and um, bought a domain, but I'll show you the process if you want to get one set up. So let's just hit Route 53 and get started. And here we have a bunch of features. You can transfer your domain or you can just register. And the process is very simple. I've, I've already gone through this by creating my own domain. So let's look at what it is. And let's say you want to buy a domain. We can search .net or whatever domain prefix you need. So let's check. And if, if let's say you want to get this, I'm added to cart and continue and you'll enter your information personal information business or company and that's it it'll take maybe just a few minutes you'll get an email to confirm you're the owner and that's it right uh, once that domain once you've gone through that process of getting that domain registered we should see that domain active uh, on the registered domains that we have an active domain there are a few things that we need to do before we can get cloudfront to point to this one we need some sort of certificate since this is newly registered so let me just copy this and uh, we're going to go over to acm you can search for this so it's acm and you should see certificate manager and ignore this this is the older one we're going to request a cert and request a public cert and for the qualified domain name and we're going to do this for both domain and subdomain. We do need site to be able to be accessible from www. So we're going to add both of those. And you can either do this through DNS validation or email validation. Uh, let's try DNS validation. 
since we're running this in our own account. And this should be pretty fast, right? Since we actually own the domain, we can go ahead and say create records in row 53 and it will automatically add the C names. Again, if you check now, this is only two records, but as soon as we authorize this process. So this should be it. So if we go back to certificate, we still see pending uh, verification. Let's just give this a minute. But we should see the actual records created here and here they are. Let me close this and just go back. And that's it. So we status has been updated and we have our cert. Now let's go over to CloudFront because we need to tell CloudFront that hey, we have a new domain and the process is similar again. We need to update the CNAME record in CloudFront. So let's open up CloudFront and let's go to our distribution. And we're going to edit and we want to add a name. And again, we're going to use a CNAME. I'm going to add the domain itself and the subdomain. And for cert, should show the cert that we just uh, created. And I'll leave the default for TLS um, 1.2 and it save changes. So that's just one step, right? CloudFront knows about our domain, but how do we let the domain itself know um, which record or which distribution to point to? So let's go back now to Route 53. And if you never used Route 53 before, your domains are managed in hosted zones and think of this as the configuration area to make changes to your domains. It will show you lists, list of the records, and let's open this up. Now we do need to create a record and point to the CloudFront distro. So each record, again, this is already uh, pointing to OnCloud as the base domain. So we we pretty much don't need to enter anything here. We just need to flip this switch to point to an alias. And this will give us the ability to point um, our traffic to a service. And in our case, we want to point it to a CloudFront distribution. And we can choose the distribution. Now this is simple since there's only one distribution and we already had the C name. So it should be showing you from the list. And we're going to create records. This may take a, a minute. We also need to create one for a subdomain. And that will be dub dub dub. And it's already as dot. So we just need that. We're going to do the same thing again. And we want to point to a CloudFront distribution. Let's choose our CloudFront and create a record. And that's it. So our, our CloudFront distribution now should be point should be pointing to our domain. So let's go ahead and give that a try. And there we go. And if we do the same, we should be getting our site to CloudFront, which is pretty cool. Also, if we go back to our CloudFront distribution, and let's refresh this we should see the alternate domains. So that's how easy it is to set up your old CloudFront distribution, register your domain, and now we can get to our site using a friendly and accessible name. Now that we have our site running our custom domain, we can also deploy uh, manually from your package at JSON. That's really good, right? But what if you want to set up something more of an automated way to deploy your code? And this will be the typical uh, workflow in a more of a production environment or if you're working on a team, right? You're, you're a developer, you'll push your code to some type of uh, repository. And then we can trigger some type of pipeline. In this case, we'll use AWS code pipeline, code build, and push that changes 
to S3. This is really simple, right? We're just gonna set up a very simple workflow whenever you make changes and you push those changes to Git or code pipeline will trigger automatically and deploy your um, React site to S3. So let's take a look at how we can go about setting that up. First thing we wanna do is actually create a repository. So I'm gonna go over to GitHub and let me click on a new repository and we're gonna call this React Deploy and just put in a simple description. And you can usually set this private or public. In this case, I'll set it to public just for this demo. If this is a, actually let's go with private um, just to keep this. And I won't add a readme yet. I'll just go ahead and create the repository. And that's it, right? But now we do need to push the code that we have locally. Um, luckily, um, Git kind of gives you the step-by-step -step source code you need just to make that initial push. And we're going to go ahead and grab this. This will create the horror or readme, which is pretty good to have. So let's go ahead and copy this. And since this isn't a repository yet, we should be able to go ahead and copy and paste that entirely. And that should push our source code up to Git. So if we go back to our repository, and here I grab this here. If you already have a repository, um, you just um, be pushing the changes up. So let's go to our repo and let's re Let's refresh this. And you notice our first uh, push to the repository will only push our readme file. So we still need to push the additional um, source code that we have locally. So let's go back to our code. And if we do a git status, we'll see all the, the code we wanna push. Our ignore file will, all the code we wanna push. So let's go ahead and add all these files and I'll just commit and let's push to our main branch so let's go back to our github repository and refresh this And here we go. So we have our source code in Git, and that's the first step. So let's go ahead and create our pipeline now. What you wanna do is open up your AWS console, and we're gonna look for a code pipeline. We'll need to use code pipeline service. Uh, mine only visible from recently visited. In your case, you may need to search for this. So let's just hit code pipeline. And I currently have no pipelines that are active, so let's create a new one. So let's hit create pipeline. And we can call this anything. I'm just gonna call it React Deployment. And most AWS service needs some type of roller permission to run. In this case, this will be this will create one for us automatically. However, if you have an existing role, you can select it. We're gonna leave as default and leave the name as is as well. So in next. For the source provider, we want to go with GitHub version 2, and this will allow us to create a connection from code pipeline to GitHub. I currently have no active connection, so I'm going to create one from scratch. If you already have a connection, you may be able to select the repository from here. So let's hit connect to GitHub. If you're doing this for the first time, you may be prompt with the GitHub authentication page. And I've done this a couple of times, so this will take me directly to the connection. So I'm gonna give this a name, and this again can be anything. I'm just gonna call it web deploy site and connect to GitHub. We will need to install an application. Now, once this app is installed in GitHub, it will allow us to either select all repository or a specific repository. For this example, we're gonna create a new app and we're gonna select the specific repository. So let's hit 
select install a new app and I'm just gonna go to my repository and I've done this a couple of times so I may need to remove the active one again here I could select all repository or I select this specific one in this case I'll go with my specific repository and it's save once this is done we should be able to just hit connect and if this is successful you will see your drop down list of your repository if you selected all repository you'll see the list of all the repos that you have and we're going to point this to the main branch if you're creating a more advanced uh, pipeline you may want to make this more of a custom for this example we just want to run this pipeline when we push to the main branch and in order to do this we want to keep this checkbox active because this will give us a create a webhook that triggers every time we merge changes to the main branch so in next with everything else left to default and for a build provider so we're going to use code build in the previous in the early examples we run all the commands that are listed in the package at json right in the code build machine we can write those commands to be executed we're, we'll need to create this from scratch again so let's hit create a project and i'm going to call this react deployment for the operating system, I'll go with Amazon Linux. If you're familiar with Ubuntu and know the appropriate commands for that, uh, you can select Ubuntu as well. And for the runtime, standard. And the image, I usually go with the latest one. Anyone should work to run. Now, this is very important. Again, this COBOL machine needs a role as well. And since we'll need to push the static files to S3 and create the CloudFront invalidation, we'll need to update this role later on to give it the necessary permission. We'll come back to this. Now those commands, we'll need to write them in what's called a build spec file. And the build spec file at YAML, this is And the build spec file is where we'll put, where we we'll write our commands or instructions to run in the code machine. This can be called any other name, .yml. I'm gonna keep the name consistent and put build spec. We can either insert this using the editor or add the build spec file to our source repository. And that's all we do in this example. So let's add build spec right here. And that should be all we need to create our pipeline. So let's hit continue to code pipeline. And let's hit next. Now we're gonna skip the plot provider for this simple example. If you're creating more of an advanced pipeline, you may, this is a great option to have a deploy provider where you can choose to use S3 or code deploy. So let's hit skip deploy stage. And we should see a list of all the commands or stages that our pipeline has. So let's hit create pipeline. Now, upon creating our pipeline, it will run automatically the first time and should fail since we haven't added the build spec file yet. And after a few minutes, this fail as predicted. So let's look at the error message. And again, it's looking for that build spec file. So we'll need to add this to our source uh, repository. So let's go over to our source code and clear. So let's go over to our source code. Now we're gonna add the build spec file in the same level as package.json. So let's just create a new file. We call this build spec.yml. 
of course if you call if you named your file anything different this should match and the build spec file just takes in a set of instruction and that you want to run within each phases so we want to add the version since this is required and now we want to tell code build the different phases to run and the command to run so our first phase will be pre-build and we want to run the npm install and here we will install the list of packages in our package.json the next phase will be our build phase and again we want to run command so let's do npm run build and to complete this we will have a post build and if you remember in our package at json we we perform the s3 sync and the cloud front end validation in this example we will use a s3 copy so let's do a aws s3 copy and we want to copy recursively so we can grab all the files from the build folder to our s3 bucket and of course this should be match your s3 bucket name and we will append a forward slash at the end just to put it in the root we also want to do a cloud front invalidation so we're going to create and this is almost identical to what we have in the package at json distribution id and I'm just going to copy and paste my distribution ID and in our package.json we add the path since we are running this in a Linux command line we want to escape this path and this just makes sure this runs as slash star and that should be it so we want to perform a npm install let's just make sure we have all our commands um, correct and a npm build to package or build folder and then we want to copy recursively everything in our build folder to our s3 bucket once that's successful we want to perform a cloud front end validation so let's add this to git i'll just add a comment and I'll push this to our main branch and this should trigger our pipeline again so if we open up code pipeline we should see in progress so if we open this up and this should be running again the source stage is usually relatively quick in this now this may should fail one more time right because we still haven't given the code machine the permissions to push to s3 and the permission to create the invalidation. As we expected, our pipeline failed again. Let's take a look at the error message. So just click on view and code build. And if you scroll all the way down to where we're initiating that command, so we're running the AWS S3 copy and we're getting access denied. And that's just because the code build machine doesn't have the permission to push to this S3 bucket. So let's try to fix that. If you scroll all the way down to your build settings and scroll to environment and we want to look for a service role. So let's open that up. And if you look in the permission policy section, there is already a policy and this is a list of permission specific to the code machine and how it keeps the log. We're not going to touch that policy itself, but we're going to add a new one. So over to the right, hit add permission and create inline policy. And there's a few ways to do this. We could write the JSON or copy and paste it. One easy way to do this is to select this service. So we want to search for S3. And I know we need, I know we need a write permission. So I'm going to collapse this right here and we need to be able to put objects in that bucket the next step is to select the resource and here we can do a wildcard and point to all 
possible buckets, so, but you'll see this message as a warning, it's not best practice. We can get real granular and specify the, the bucket name. So I'll click on add ARN, and here we just need to copy and paste your bucket name. I already have my bucket name. And for objects, we do need all objects, so this should be star. So your bucket name, and this will create the ARN. Once you have that in place, we're just going to click Add. Another permission that we need is the ability to create CloudFront invalidation. So let's it add an additional permission. And the service should be CloudFront. So select CloudFront. And again, in the right section, we should see Create Invalidation. Here it is. And we're going to follow the same steps we did earlier, right? We can either go with all resources or we can get very specific. So I'm going to hit Add ARN. And I just need to copy the distribution ID there. And I'm just going to paste this and click Add. Now we just need to hit review policy and we're going to give this a name and I'm going to call this S3 CloudFront policy and it create policy and that should create your policy. So now we have the permission. We just need to run the pipeline. So if we go back to code pipeline select your pipeline and we're going to release change and that should initiate a pipeline all over again and now we have a successful build of course we haven't made any change to our site so it should be identical but now we should be able to make some change and automatically have our pipeline run so let's go back to our source code and i'll just kind of clear this I'm just going to make one tiny change where I'll increment the code by three. Let me save this and I'll do a git push. Update source and let me do a push. Our main branch we should trigger a new pipeline build so we should see in progress and we're gonna run this again and our pipeline is successfully built now let's check our website we're gonna refresh and this should be incrementing by tree over the next few lessons we're gonna take away over the next few lessons we're gonna take a look at AWS Amplify Amplify makes it super easy to deploy web apps. Of course, we'll only be touching just the surface of Amplify since it does so much more. Amplify is, think of it as a suite of applications where you can build mobile backends, APIs, and hosting your web app is just one feature and that's what we'll look at. Now, this is a service within the AWS console, so you can always search for AWS Amplify. And you should get to this page. You can scroll down and this will show you just some of the features of Amplify. There's Amplify Studio, there's Amplify Hosting. This is what we're interested in. And here we see support for React, Vue, and just simple static JavaScript applications. So let's it get started. And off the bat, there's a couple options where we can tie this in. And just to show you how simple this is, let's start by testing deploy without Git provider. And we want to give this app a name, so let's call it first web app. And for the environment, we're just going to call this dev, because Amplify makes it easy to really push applications across multiple environments. So we're going to call this dev. In the year we can we can point it to a S3 bucket if we have those static files, but we're just gonna use drag and drop. And again, 
we just want to drag the build folder. So if we go to our source code, and if I do a npm run build, if you're running a new React application, once your app is compiled, we just want to grab the build folder and copy it over to Amplify. Once your application is built, we want to grab the build folder. I've already opened up the folder here, so I can drag this over. So let me, in this example, you want to grab the complete build folder. In the previous example, we grabbed the, the content of the build folder. In this example, you want to grab the complete build folder. So let's grab that over and I'm just going to drag and drop. This may take a minute or two. Let's just hit save and deploy. And let's give it some time to complete. And that's it. We have a website. So let's click on the domain. And this is the URL we get by default. And I think we're still loading. So let's wait till this is 100%. And let's try again. And here we are. So within maybe a minute, you're able to push your application to Amplify. Now, this may not be the way you want to keep pushing changes and it's just not scalable. The best way is to have this tied to a Git repository. So let's do this again. And I'll create a new application. This time we'll use Git. So let me close this. I'll go to all applications, new app, and we're going to host web app. And this time we want to use GitHub since we have our application hosted in Git. Hit continue. We're going to connect Amplify to our Git, so authorize. And again, similar to what we did in Code Pipeline, let's just hit the repository name. And we're going to install an application that gives us access to this specific application. So let's look for React Deploy. And we're going to install and authorize. And again, I'm just going to log in. Once that's connected, we should be able to select our repository and the branch. We currently only have one main branch, so we just want to use that. Now, if you're using a Mona repository where you have multiple projects, you could easily check this and select the folder itself. Uh, since we're just deploying from a branch, we're just going to select the appropriate branch and hit next. And we also get a build similar to a build spec. And this is the set of command that the build machine needs to deploy your project. So we can download or we can edit this. Let's download this for now. Let it next. And we're going to save and deploy. And this will go through the steps one at a time, right? So we have our provision, build, deploy, and verify. Quite similar to our pipeline run before. So this should take a few minutes. And after a few minutes, the pipeline should complete. So let's test our application. And there you go. So not only did we connect this to source control, we also have a pipeline. Now that our application has gone through the full pipeline and it works, what if we want to make changes to our application again? And this is very simple, right? So let's go to our application and I'm just going to make a minor change. I need to reduce the increments right here. I'll save this and let me do a git status just to make sure my change is in effect. And I'll add this and I'll just commit this. Counter. And let's push this to main. And this should trigger our pipeline again. And there we go. So we have a full pipeline that we can automatically deploy. And we can expand on this a lot more 
given how easy it is to get started. And our build is completed successfully. Let's test our application again. Let's refresh this and it should only be incrementing by one. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to push new changes.